In this video, we would like to talk about the concept basis of a vector space. A basis contains n vectors, v1 to vn. If the set of vectors actually span the whole vector space, that's the condition one here. And the second condition is that all the vectors in the set are actually linearly independent. And let's look at a couple of examples now. So let's take a look at the two given vectors here. And I'm giving you a two-dimensional space, which is basically the xy plane. And let's see whether this set of vectors v1 and v2 form a basis for the vector space R2. And for the first condition, please recall the meaning of the spanning set of v1 and v2. Basically, if um, the vectors span the whole space R2, it basically means any vector in R2 can be written as a linear combination of the given vectors. So let me put it here. So uh, let's see what happens if you look at any vector, regardless of the values of x, y in the x, y plane. Are you able to write it down as a linear combination of the vectors v1 and v2? And please recall, just like the last couple of videos, for such a vector equation, we can always form certain linear system based on what you have on the x coordinate, you can make them equal on the left and the right side, and the same can be done for the y coordinate, right? So basically, it means there should be two equations now, and there should be two unknowns. The two unknowns are basically c1 and c2, right? And the first equation is going to be the x coordinate for the first one, which is 2 times c1 plus 3 times c2. And the second equation has the first term c1 plus c2, right? And we can try to use the matrix form now. And we have done this kind of things for quite a few times. And most of you may have noticed that, you see. Um, when we are arriving at this stage of the matrix form, usually um, the vector v1 is just the column vector. And the vector v2 is simply the second column of the coefficient matrix in the linear system. Anyway, um, let's look at the theoretical part now. If uh, regardless of the values of x, y, we are able to find a solution to this system, it basically means uh, the answer to this problem is yes. All the vectors x, y can be written as a linear combination of the two vectors if you find a solution c1, c2. And this fact is intimately related to the determinant of the coefficient vectors. And uh, we have explained this fact already. We can take the determinant, which is obviously non-zero. And uh, this fact means that for this linear system, um, the solutions always assist and actually um, is uniquely assist because we know the linear system now has exactly one set of solutions only. And because C1, C2 assist, you see, basically it means this equation now we understand that um, is true for any vector x, y in the plane. It means what? It means basically the two vectors v1 and v2 span the whole plane, right? Because um, all the vectors can be written as linear combination of the two given vectors. So it means the condition one is fine. So let me put it here. So you can look at the answer here. The answer is yes. Uh, the span of the two given vectors actually span the whole plane. And the second condition to check is that the two vectors are actually linearly independent. And if the two vectors are actually linearly independent, by definition, in such a vector equation, we understand that the only solution is going to be c1 equals c2 equals 0 if uh, they are independent. And once again, for any vector equation like this, we are able to form certain linear system because we have two unknowns. And um, we have only two coordinates, which means the system is 2 by 2. And let me put it here. So you see, once again, you, you can look at the columns of the coefficient matrix. For the first column, is the same as what we have in V1. For the second column, is basically V2. And for this system to have exactly one set of solutions, and it simply means that we just need to check the determinant of the coefficient matrix. And once again, of course, the determinant is non-zero. It means that there's only exactly one solution now for the system. And because it's a homogeneous system, the exactly one solution, obviously, is C1 equals 0 and C2 equals 0, right? And um, it means the answer is yes. The two vectors are actually linearly independent. So let me write it down here. So you see, because both conditions now are satisfied for the definition of the basis, so we can write the conclusion now. 
So you see uh, two conditions are both good. It basically means uh, the given two vectors basically forms a basis for our current vector space, right? And um, I hope uh, this simple example gives you some hints on how to notice whether certain number of vector is going to be the basis of the vector space. Um, please look at um, the way we find the answer to this problem. So let me add a note here. The first note is that for any vector space, you are able to find infinitely many choices of basis for the vector space given. Because, uh, for example, so we have already seen that in the two-dimensional space, um, the R2, um, the given vectors like V1 and V2 actually form a basis. And um, there are other kind of basis, uh, and it's quite easy to see. For example, I can choose the second choice of basis to be this. You see, um, you can easily check that this one is also a basis of the R2. And um, if you recall how we check the first choice to be the basis of R2, we check both conditions, 1 and 2. And both conditions come down to looking at certain linear system. And both comes down theoretically to the determinant formed by the matrix, which has the columns as V1 and V2, right? So basically, same as the second choice. I mean, uh, to check that, basically, um, it must be a basis of the R2 for both conditions, the spanning set, and also for the linearly independency for the two vectors. We just have to look at the determinant. As long as determinant is non-zero, we understand that uh, it must be a basis for the given space. And you can easily look at other choices. But before looking at other choices, just let you know uh, this choice is a special one because you see, basically, you are choosing the first vector to be the unit vector on the x-axis and the second vector to be the unit vector along the y-axis. And this one um, is the obvious choice in, the, in that sense. Basically, people call it a standard basis, right? And for example, we can look at um, another choice here. Um, maybe I can give you something like that. Can you easily tell me whether it is a basis or not? And once again, based on what we have done for the first example, uh, it comes down to checking two conditions. So you see the spanning set of the two vectors is the whole space, and also both vectors are linearly independent. And um, once again, please go back to the steps that I've taken to, to prove that the first choice is the basis. Uh, we basically uh, just need to look at the determinants of the matrix which has the columns V1 and V2 here. So I put it here. And as long as this determinant is non-zero, both conditions can be satisfied. And you can check the determinant. In this case, the determinant is exactly one, which is non-zero, of course. And that's why two conditions are both satisfied. And we can call it a basis. And now, and I would like to give you the second note. If, let's say, the dimension of the vector space is less than the number of vectors which are given, and I claim that, uh, please recall what you learned in the last video about the linearly independency of the given vectors. Whenever such condition occur, the given number of vectors is actually bigger than the dimension of the whole space. We understand that um, these vectors are not linearly independent. And because it basically means the condition is not satisfied, and we don't have to care about the first condition anymore, right? And um, it basically means uh, this set of vector cannot form a basis of our current vector space. So um, I think it's a quite a useful criterion to determine whether certain set of vector can form a basis of a vector space or not. And um, there's a second note I would like to give. But before that, let's look at an example first. So please look at the current note. We still look at the two-dimensional space here, you see. But now I actually give you vectors. And um, it's quite easy now because the given number of vectors is 3, which is higher than the dimension of the space. We understand that it cannot form a basis of the vector space R2. And it's simply because the three vectors cannot be linearly independent. If you don't understand why, um, we can draw such a conclusion that they are not linearly independent. Please go back to the previous video about the linear independence of the vectors. So let's say now you start with the opposite assumption, which is saying that the dimension of the whole vector space is larger than the number of vectors given. And in that case, uh, we claim that the condition one must be false in the sense that the given number of vectors definitely cannot span the whole space. And uh, because now it means the condition one is false, we, we don't have to care about the condition about the linear independency of the vectors 
It simply means that the given set of vectors cannot form a basis for, for the vector space V, right? And uh, let's look at a simple example now. So you see in this case, we are looking at the three dimensional space and I only give you two vectors, right? And uh, there's no chance these two vectors can span the whole space. Can you see why? Um, the intuitive reasoning is that for a three dimensional space, you basically have uh, three coordinates. And basically you have three degree of freedom to move around the points. However, if you look at the span of these two vectors, you basically have only two degrees of freedom because these two constants are free to change inside the spanning set, but uh, there's only two degrees of freedom. So which definitely is not enough for us to span the whole space, right? If you want an intuitive explanation, and um, basically that's it. So basically it means the spanning set cannot span the whole three-dimensional space. It means the condition one is false. It basically means uh, the given set of vectors cannot form a basis for R3. So I hope by now I give you enough explanations about the meaning of basis and how to determine a given set of vectors form a basis or not. And uh, the next video, we'll look at more exercises.